Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together to take on various topics that tend to cross one's path when you embark on this journey of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and a teaching artist, and the other host is... Hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger, and I, let's see, I make and teach about interactive things. And I also coach about collaboration and uh, career decisions. And we'll talk more about our various business endeavors later on in the show. But uh, if you're new to the show, if you're just checking us out, we stream live at twitch.tv slash lean into art and then collect as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash lean into art. But um, we tend to pick a, a single topic and then drill all the way down. That's our typical format we change it up every once in a while but it, to, odds are you could expect that we're going to start with a single uh subject and spend an hour on it the first half we look at what it is what it looks like what uh what the practice is in action and then the second half we uh, unpack well how do we think about this thing when we're engaging with it so with that teed up um rob i'm looking at the calendar we are like 14 15 days away from november which means Part two of Creative Challenge season is upon us, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's, yeah. I mean, we've got that that vocabulary of we call this a, a Creative Challenge season, and I, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's a fair way to say it because Art Sound Off begins for us, and that that's a Creative Challenge that we started. Um, it's really pretty straightforward the the core of it the gist of it the the default interpretation of it is record your thoughts about what you make and share them the thing is there's no, not one way to do it you go you can go to artsoundoff.com and see lots of different prompts and different recipes different ways to sort of um you know successfully tackle this thing where where you know you can maybe you're used to sharing your work, but are you used to um, unpacking it more, describing it more, pitching it, and describing yourself and why you do what you do? All those things that go into being a uh, well, an artist, whether you're solo or on a team. It, it's you know finding a way to explore your thoughts and unpack them, and leave a record for yourself to go back to and see like, well, you now it's been a couple of years since I recorded that that's awesome. You probably will change as you, as you grow. And we've done this creative challenge. How many years now, Jersey? Six times. Well, this will be our sixth. We've done it five times. Um, and, and we've, we've explored this with other creative challenges. Um, this way of like making it fresh, making it, uh, approaching it from a new vantage point. You actually have a workshop about it, which I should pull up real quick. Um, uh, it's at robstenzinger.com. I'm sure I can get to it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's featured on my 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 sort of ah, landing. There page. it is. I'll pull it up right now. Oh, that just goes to the YouTube video. Creative the wrong challenges thing. present both oh, fun and potentially difficult <laughs> there options. There it is. In your path as an Let me artist. pull it up on the screen. Creative challenges are public or private ways to practice yeah. your art. Many art disciplines so have adopted. So customizing your next creative challenge guys. with Rob Stenzinger. Um, mm hmm which you get to at robstenzinger.com. But so but that was just a tee up that uh, this idea that we've explored how to hack creative challenges to make so that we're not just like doing them just for the pure, like the rote sort of like, well, everybody's doing this thing and you just do it. That's all like, well, let's explore what we want to get out of it. And how do we approach the creative challenge to understand, like, to form a strategy to get what we want out of it? Um, and that said, uh, maybe I should hit the music so we can start the actual mm -hmm. episode because that's what we're going to talk about with Art Sound Off with this whole idea of journaling um, and how we might what, play around with the challenge. Uh, how can we level up through the challenge? But specifically this time about like uh, doing the audio journaling that Art Sound Off calls for. Um, so... Where do you want to start with this? Well, let's see some context. Uh, I mean, we started out Art Sound Off, um, I suppose, six years ago, right? And it's it was just okay. It's a November Creative Challenge, so there's 30 days. You do 30, you know, post 30 things, and you just do a, a micro podcast. 
and have it be about your art. And we had some ideas and suggestions and examples. And but every single year we've kept kept evolving. And because we noticed when folks would participate too, they would take it in different directions, which is exciting and fun. And um, you know, I think pretty early on we we wanted to celebrate and encourage that. Mm -hmm. How do you get more use out of this thing? And how do you use what's easy for you to use? Like, how do we make this thing as easy to do as possible? Right. Um, because people like Troy shadowing Tronics, who's interacted with the show quite a bit over the years, uh, just used it to create content for his YouTube channel. Like he just turned on his webcam and did his art sound offs on YouTube. You know, other people played with things like SoundCloud or, um, oh, what was that one called? Our audio boom, or mm -hmm. it started out as audio boo became audio boom. Um, recording on their phones, recording on their computers, recording with, and then some people not even sharing them. Some people kept them in, a, you know, a folder on a G drive for themselves, you know. Um, Which it's great. I mean, it, it's in a way it's, it's like, a, it's similar to the kinds of things you learn when you actually test your product. <laughs> so putting things in, into people's hands and getting to observe how, they, how they actually do things and how they're actually wanting to use it and whatnot, as opposed to saying, um, here's a 20 question survey from lean into art talking about creative challenges. Would you see yourself participating in this thing? If we made it like this, what if we made it like that? And, and so if it was like it, it, people we're not great at predicting our own behavior. So surveys that are ex that emphasize that predictive stuff, aren't that useful, whatever. Anyway. So yeah, we made it and everyone is, is sort of doing their thing and we're learning from it, from all of it, from what we're making and seeing what, what other folks went make. And we've talked about this a ton. So I'm yeah. hoping we come up with new angles on it too. So um, yeah, we've, we, this is how many here you collected some episodes where we've actually talked about this. So like extra lean 49 way back. Uh, extra lean 99, not so far back. Then lean into heart episode 139, 165, 253, 117, 210. And that's not even all of them, all the times we talked about this. Correct. We've mentioned <laughs> it in, in, in context with lots of conversations, which kind of makes sense. I mean, this is sort of, um, I mean, it's, it's one of the products of this project lean into art mm -hmm. is, is that fairly early on, it, you know, we, I guess after, after two years of doing the main show, we started Art Sound Off, which is kind of funny. Oh, that is funny. Wow. Well, yeah. Wow. How, uh, how uh, gutsy of us to think that we could start something so soon into a project. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, I mean, to be fair, I had been doing podcasting for uh, quite a few years up to that point. And, um, mm -hmm. I, and I think part of what inspired it was um, I had years before been doing this thing called Thunder Punch Daily, which was a journal microcast where, to be fair, it wasn't as much of a journal as much as it was as like sort of wrapping up my thoughts in an essay on a particular subject like this is the way i'm engaging with this subject right now this is the way i think about this particular aspect of making comics right now um but it, it did get a little journaly at other times but um there was a small number of people who reacted very positively to this very short thing it was you know 15 minutes i think was like a long episode of the show um and so we thought well why not ask other people to do it is it's a uh, my thinking is is that and that we do this with the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival is like I want the festival to be a way for cartoonists to get some hands on experience doing participatory events of some kind more than a panel right like a panel is like it feels very structured and, and predictable in that I'm sitting here you're sitting there you ask me questions I answer the questions as best I can whereas like developing an interactive experience for people of various skill levels can be very daunting so okay well we create low risk events for you to do where it's like you just do a, a quick draw you stand up at a a uh, drawing pad and you take input from the crowd and you try to talk through what you're doing while you're doing it. And it's only a half hour. It's not a big commitment from you. You don't have to design anything to be part of this thing. And once you got that hands-on experience, now maybe you want to propose a workshop, right? So there's people who say, you know, it's like, well, I thought about doing this kind of uh, audio project or that kind of audio project. Well, okay, do five, 10 minutes a day for a month and see how it feels, how it fits and, and experiment and play with it and see what you like about it and what you don't like about it. And maybe you'll come out the other side that, that at least that's the way we've tended to engage with creative challenges. Right. 
is a way to experiment with ideas. Yeah, well, you you get to um, probably find more inroads for how you at least describe what you do and why you do it, which is likely going to help you as far as selling your your services, selling your your given projects, or how you go about them, or something. This you know, I, like whatever your endeavor is as an artist, however you engage in trade, you need to describe that somehow, yeah. and. This is a, a chance to practice that and also that other mission of like, well, we encourage people to share what you learn and that you're affected by this process. It's sort of, um, it's an ongoing cycle of, you know, you, you, you try trying a thing and then, then getting more in, in touch with the, your experience of trying and what worked or didn't and then being able to convey that. Yeah, that's, that, that is a, that's a way to go about personal and professional development that we tend to encourage. And yeah, and and we both really like in, we encourage it because we enjoy it ourselves. Like so for instance, something that I think is germane to this discussion that actually is what I'm going through right now with um the not the October challenge. I'm not doing October, but I'm doing a 31-day challenge that I made up for myself where I'm developing a graphic novel pitch an hour a day for 31 days to see if I can do it. And at the very least, have like a big chunk of work done ahead of time. But the extra layer of challenge I put on top of it is I'm journaling it through my Patreon. So patreon.com slash jersey. Every day I'm checking in with, here's what I've got so far. And there was actually some days where I had some failures where it's like, okay, I think what I got for my hour is not what I'm gonna use, right? But, but let me think about it. I'm gonna think about it and write out a little short, post exploring what I just did and two things came out of this one we talk more about this in detail maybe uh in a general sense is product development I'm developing a product on the go an hour a day in the form of this pitch but I'm also practicing uh so when it comes to the product development a corner I turned with this project is being forced to develop an outline in four hours or less um that's all I gave myself in the, I budgeted four hours, uh, four different days of the month where I'm going to work on the outline. Um, it forced me into this panic mode where it's like, well, I don't have time to be an artiste about this. I don't have time to fuss about with, with language. What are the four main points I have to hit with this outline? What are the four important things about this story? And suddenly I wrote an outline, uh, a one page outline that was actually pretty, like it was a good first draft. It was a really serviceable first draft. So like the, 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 the compression of the challenge made me level up something that I've really had a hard time with in the, in the past. And I think I had a hard time with it because the moment it got challenging, I was like, well, pff, push it aside. I got other work to do. I'm just not going to attend to that until later, until the inspiration occurs. Right. Um, but the second thing, and we can unpack this one too, is by journaling about it every day, I'm also, um, I'm packaging up my experience for transmission through either workshops, talking with people, uh, potential editors about what services that I provide and why, right? Uh, I'm giving the, full, the broader picture of, well, here's the thing I make and here's all the information that you need to know about like what I bring to the table as a cartoonist. So. That's it. I mean, now you have like, think about, well, you need to create a landing page for, for this product. Okay, you probably have a bunch of content now that you can really, uh, you can at the, at the very least react to, if not have something that's fairly close to what you need. Mm -hmm. Maybe even if you're lucky, it's exactly what you need, at least <laughs> some pieces of it. But, um, but that's, I mean, the, the, the nature of so much in, in creating and writing and, and producing products and the, the materials that surround what you make to, to convey and make those products um, to, to spread awareness and make it um, more apparently relevant to anyone who would encounter them. That's, that's stuff you make too. That's like the, the product that surrounds your product. Um, and yeah, what's interesting about that, work on that. Yeah. Well, it, it, this is a chance to work on that. I, I think is a really cool, it, this is just you being who you are, but it's like it, it, you are so good at like summarizing like the spirit of something um, because it's not like 10 years ago, I would have thought I had to show up to a Patreon blog with answers. This is how you do it. And the way I'm doing it now is I'm sort of like working in public and I'm saying well, public, public in quotes because it's it's closed. It's you don't have to pay to be part of this discussion, but it's me saying. I think this is what I'm doing. Here's here's my uh, hypotheses. Here's my suppositions. 
here's me engaging with it. I think this is where I am so far, you know, and I end a lot of posts with wish me luck. <laughs> you know, it's like, boy, I think I'm going to do this tomorrow. I hope it works out that way. Wish me luck, everybody. And like people are actually commenting like, good luck, you know. Um, so it's not it's not that I'm so I'm sort of working this through not knowing where I'm going to land sort of having some guesses as to like, this is what I think is going to happen, but then also chronicling the surprises as they happen. Right. So like there was one day where I checked in where, um, I had an hour set aside to do outlining and the day just shook out to where, um, I had to be out of my studio and I was really only getting like four 15 minute breaks to attend to my outline. I was like, well, I'm really not going to be able to give it my full attention if I'm doing it in 15 minute chunks. How about we just do some thumbnailing? Let's thumbnail the, 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 the what is it? Like the demo pages, the comics pages for the pitch. And so I had that to show for for the day. So it was sort of like, well, here's me chronicling how you got to have loose knees when you're making these things. And, and let's celebrate the fact that when you're a solo cartoonist doing your own project, there's lots of parts for you to attend to depending on what the day has to offer in terms of bandwidth. So, and now I got to do a small essay about that, right? And it's a way for me to stay in touch with the fact that this thing, um, I could have engaged with that with frustration. Damn it, I wanted to work on the outline today. Why does this keep happening to me? I guess I'm just not cut out to be a professional cartoonist after all. Or I could go, <laughs> or I could go, well, let's see what we could do with what we've got. And hey, that's right, that's part of this job is working with what we got and being adaptable. Do you, so a lot of times I fuel up my adaptable car with some damn it fuel. Um, because <laughs> I will start out with yeah. plenty of that thinking about, Oh, God, just this, if I could only um, tackle this thing first, which I wanted yeah. to do first, but I got to shift things around yeah. and I, I don't know. That totally does happen. Uh, so I do both, right? Where it's like, you know, sure. Then how do I, whew, this is a pile of, you know, something I need to channel it somewhere. And then I'm like, okay, what's, a, <laughs> oh, my, yeah, my sure. tasks, what's next? How can I adapt? And then, you know, hopefully make the most of it. Uh, yeah. Given the circumstance. Yeah, it's 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 uh I I don't want to like phrase or, or present this as like well I always look for the positive but uh but but, but package it up as okay, like okay why not that's not bad I mean I'm not trying to vilify that either no More no I like, I'm just saying I'm not trying to be glib about it right it's like like you know look for yeah. the the silver lining and accentuate the positive um but more of like I was trying to point out how the dynamic of trying to show up with something every day, trying to make that hour count, and mm -hmm. having something to deliver every day means that it had the unexpected side effect of routing me around those feelings of, of frustration and anger, like, damn it, damn it, damn it, um, to, okay, well, what do I do with this damn it? Because you gotta, you gotta be accountable for this hour. You gotta make this hour work somehow, right? Mm -hmm. And so the, it, it had this unexpected side benefit of making me more reflective and making me, um, more i don't want to say more productive but it was psychologically sort of like um boomeranging me back around to positivity by virtue of the fact that i had to have something to show for it so let's quickly find out something that we can show for the day right so that i wasn't just like kicking a stone and showing up to my patreon well i guess nothing happened today because things just don't work out for old jurors you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's you know that i I guess we're yeah saying the same story there, yeah. right? Where yeah. the um, th it's funny how having just that little bit of a of a process that has to do with for sure moving forward, whatever that looks like for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's um it, it and it's a helpful and, catalyst. And like we explored last episode where um, I hit a stumbling block because I hit a part where I did fail. I, I finished a design. I was like, mm, I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. And then I explored why I thought it didn't feel right. But I still wasn't sure what to do about it. And then we had that coaching session last episode where you brought me around to, oh, I need to do more research. And so I went to the library and got a whole bunch of materials, which I, you know, I fulfilled my contract and I posted it to Patreon. Just like I said, I would. Um, but 
flipping through those books at night, you know, just before bed, just spending like a, you know, half hour to an hour just like doing like, you know, urgent capture of just reading as much as I can. Got this great book on uh, Mayan script and like how, what their writing system was. So like it just had this added side benefit of like, this isn't going to go into my project at all, but it's just, it's fascinating reading. Um, it helped me get again that 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 positive boomerang of like well i'm no, i'm doing something about this now and so yes i shared the failure and yes i shared the stumbling block and i shared the frustration of it and i presented some hypotheses as to why i think i'm frustrated about this and then you know now i'm back engaged with it again through you know the journaling and the sharing and the, the coaching that you did to um you know generally speaking feeling more excited about the project um so, I don't. I don't know. I guess yeah. That that's that. We're, we're t we are telling the same story. But like, what else? What else is there about? Um, art well, sound just to point out too, like yeah. this that whole practice of of committing to the 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 frequent sharing aspect of a challenge, which again, that's an optional thing, right? Um, because when when I I've noticed some folks that that will engage with art sound off, will go into um, like they're going into their own they're coaching themselves and unpacking and working through really hard, intense things. And I admire that. And I'm, I'm also thinking that that's stuff I would more put in my private journal, right? Just my own taste and, and comfort or discomfort with um, going to, to that degree of, or I guess I'd like to, I don't know, maybe there's different flavors of vulnerability and it's like, that's the one where I'm like, yeah, I keep that one close. Anyway, like um, that habit in general, I'm, I'm wandering a little bit afield. My main point is I want to, um, I'm working on this again right now, is, is being in frequent contact with the folks that care about what I make. And yeah, it's extra, it's, it's c c maybe arguably extra work on top yep. of making the thing. Sure. But it's, but is it? <laughs> I would say it's probably not. In, in, in how I'm looking at it now, I would, I, I argue that it's important to find that way of, find a way of staying in touch with the people that care about what you make and to continue to expand that group of people who care about what you make. And if you're making in silence, that's probably not helping that goal, which actually does affect the current thing you're making. So I, I find that, that just, um, <laughs> when I'm in the habit of it, it helps my audience grows little by little, right? When I'm out of the habit, it's, it doesn't help. And now when I need to do it to support a project, oh, it, I, it's like the, I'm all rusty and I have to like reconnect with that habit. So anyway, it has this aspect of it too. Of it's, a, it's an important piece of holistically being successful with your project. There's, there's, yeah, you're describing a use it or lose it kind of, skill and muscle right where i've noticed this okay so science comics rockets has been out for well over a year and a half now right is that right july august september october well about a year and four months right last year we did a big big we did a book tour we went to several stops around the midwest and at that time it was we were pretty conversant in talking about the, newton's laws and how rockets work but like to quote Professor Jones, I put it in a book so I wouldn't have to remember it. And so I've got another event coming up uh, in a couple weeks. I'm going to be at the um, Buckeye Book Festival. And it's like, I got to reread the book because I don't remember what everything is in there. Right. Uh, so th there's a, it, like so there's like an assumption that we have, like, well, if you wrote a book on a subject, you must be an expert on a subject. Well, there's a, sure, you know, everything that you put into that book, but it doesn't mean that you sit around thinking about that subject all the time. And like you have to like revisit your old material to be able to talk about it. Um, so too, with your creative process, if you're doing it intuitively, which a lot of times we are, it becomes an intuition as you become more practiced, um, doesn't mean that you're going to be great at having a conversation about it with somebody who's interested and curious about it. That's a really good point. Uh, yeah. So another, another effect of, of that and in, in being in, in more practice of it, you're, you're ready to keep marketing what you're making, what you're making now. And also the gosh, you're right. The, the, you're, you're in touch with the nuance and it's fresh and more transmittable. 
if you're practicing that. So yeah, I, I, there's a, there are multiple layers to it. It's not just the simple mechanics of um, like a underpants gnomes business model of like re report podcast and share it, then question mark and then profit. It's pretty straightforward of, you know, staying in touch with the topics and your skill in performing, sharing this stuff, being it, you know, being able to relate and, and advocate for what you do and what you make and why. Yeah. And, uh, keeping, keeping honed at that or becoming seen, honed at that or wherever your ad is fine. It's, but just oh, practicing gosh. it. Yeah. They, I go back to that Carol Tyler quote that I love so much. I wrote it down because it was like, yes, thank you for giving me permission. Is uh, She said, uh, like, we, we got to give ourselves permission to be where we're at. Right. And, you know, people still c comment on how much they enjoyed the Art and Story podcast. But I, I can guarantee you that if I went back and looked at it uh, and listened to it, I'm like, that's 2007 me you know i'm not that person anymore or i mean for whatever that means right like i'm, I'm i've grown i've adapted i've uh, you know i've got different different outlooks on certain things um but it's fine that that stuff exists because that is who i was right and like i think that's something we're also learning right now is like we're in this period where we're starting to come to grips with the fact that oh guess what people grow and change and uh you know we, we have to be a little bit more uh gentle about our, our past selves sometimes um mm -hmm. totally a separate topic but like yeah. do you uh if you think about listening to like like if you rolled the dice and randomized an art and story from the or from the first year or two right mm -hmm. Does that sound appetizing to go do? <laughs> Not really. Uh, it, it's, uh, <sighs> but I don't want to be hard on it either, right? I don't want to be like, oh, that's old crap. Don't listen. I mean, it's, it's the same thing with like people who are like, don't look at my old art. It's so bad. I'm like, no, that's a record of your growth. And I'm sure just like with my old art, there would be elements of listening to my past self where I'd be like, ah, the kid was onto something there, right? Like that, that was the, the, the beginning of some really careful thinking. Or there was some careful thinking going on there. And maybe I don't agree with the conclusions or maybe it's not articulated the way I would articulate it now. But generally speaking, I agree with that younger person. Um, I, I have the privilege of I work with young people all the time. So I'm watching this growth happen all the time. I'm very much um, uh, aware of like, yeah, you know, like I, I was just talking with a former student of mine who is like now they're in their mid 20s and they were cringing at remembering showing me their first one point perspective drawing when they were like 16, you know, and they were like really, really proud of it. And I was very congratulating. I'm like, wow, you did it. You cracked the code. Good for you. You know, it wasn't an incredibly skillful drawing, but for a 16 year old who tried it for the first time, holy cow, was not an achievement. Right. So I think like there's that aspect that uh, that I'm always very aware of when talking with artists. So while I would have like a little bit of a cringiness of going back to my listening to my old self because there'd probably be like some weird verbal tics and there'd be probably be, I'd be able to hear like the panic in my voice like when I was first starting out. Like Mark and I were so nervous doing a podcast. We, we really felt like we're putting it all out there. <laughs> <laughs> for all the 500 people who listen to it right like we're really putting it all out there but um but so like there's like some assumptions that i look back on i'm like oh yeah you just didn't have the context yet but i bet there would be some stuff where i'm like wow that's cool i had that i was thinking pretty hard about stuff back then right there would be that aspect as well you yeah you hit on all the thoughts about like <laughs> looking at your past work and you have past work to look at which yeah. has a utility to it that you know it, it's not like if you held it all in and never podcasted now suddenly it'd be better right <laughs> um, <laughs> this is an argument i remember getting into with another artist uh, on the art and story podcast is like because i was advocating this whole idea of like share your work share your progress because it is like you said it's a record and, this, and he actually said to me on the air i don't remember what episodes so, you know don't ask me to link to it but it was like no you should wait until you're good before you start sharing stuff i'm like well how do you even know what that is <laughs> <sighs> yeah and uh so this is to it. So, right. Looking at all that, whatever. So yeah, and honestly, art and story was, was, was amazing work. And I, you're right. I'm, I'm thankful because you know, I got, I, now I know you because of it and I learned a ton from it and all that stuff. I think people should listen to it. If, if, uh, but, if you, if you're excited about the, 
like like there's a and especially like there's more of a topic focus specifically on comics every single week. So. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Um, it was called Art and Story because that was the way comics were sometimes credited. Art and Story by blah blah blah. Um, but yes, you could point to it like non predictable incidental beneficial outcomes like our relationship as a result of me doing that show. But you were pointing at something that is non um, uh, incidental is a guaranteed outcome is you will have a body of work. You will have a trail to show. What other outcomes you can't predict, but you can at least predict that now you have a record of work that you can go back to and refer to and evaluate your growth and also provide a, a, a trail of evidence that you have stepped up and, you know, shared something with the world. Mm. And so something, too, is like thinking about... Um, yeah, I think, well, yeah, we're not going to make an objective case, like argument against it, right? So, so I don't know what to say about that. I'm not even going to worry about it. If um, it's okay, if if it's something you're not into, that's fine. I don't believe that. Oh, this is mandatory for every human being on the planet. If we can only get them access to to make you know podcasts or whatever, I wouldn't be against it. Um, but I don't think it it's. I, I argue the case because there's that other that also that layer of experience. And now you've got more practice sharing is also, right? It's not just, yeah, that it's it's the experience you build through the sharing. So other other things can come up too, right? So art sound off starts happening. I notice that it's, you know, sure, we do this in November. Other people do art sound off other times of the year. Hmm. And I don't. I don't have a watchful art sound off eye on the horizon or whatever, but once in a while it pops up, I'll, I'll do a search for it or whatever. Cause I'm trying to find something to link to or what have you. And all of a sudden, yeah, someone did a series of YouTube videos or, you know, someone else shared some stuff on, you know, a different podcast network. It's like, Oh, neat. that is even cooler. Right. That is even cooler when people like not only hack it to, to for their own benefit, but hack it to be like, well, I don't have the bandwidth in November, but I could do it in February, right? And yeah. just do it whenever. Um, That's uh, and and just just to you know to be a catalyst uh, of where oh someone found this, they were intrigued and then tried it. Oh, awesome! That 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 feels good. Mm-hmm. Putting something useful out in the, into the world with this um, art sound off creative challenge. Uh, so. Speaking of useful things and getting uses out of it, um, I know like we have, you know, the, the default plan overall is to do this journaling and we've got different prompts, but you can take it any direction you want. And so the, the likely common outcome is to get experience practicing journaling about your art process and experience. But then um, we've also done other work with it, like uh, product development or mm-hmm. um Let's see. And, and then with different levels of refinement, I did some product development last year that was pretty, you know, like just a rough draft where I just wanted to get some thoughts out of my head that I had not been making time to do, especially related to user experience and the idea that just advocating that the tools of user experience are here for anybody. If you get a grasp of um, like planning effective meetings to get toward um, thoughtful collaborative outcomes. If you get a, a grasp, a grasp toward how can I be intentional about like something I want to document that gets us a more clear understanding about who we're serving all that stuff. I'm like, just get this out of my head because I've lived and performed it so many years, you know, in the field. And for some reason, just haven't done a lot of podcasting about it. So it was great for that. But then here's Jersey and his feed cranking out and, uh, like something that sounds like it came off of an audible, right? Oh, you're talking about what I did last year? Mm-hmm. Well, that that is very kind of you. I I I would I would uh accuse you of overstating, but I, it was it was a pretty good first draft at an audiobook, which by the way, um I'm I'm taking those episodes down before I start Art Sound off this year. We'll talk more in the second half about what we're going to do this year. Mm-hmm. But um the idea was yeah, to do like for the fifth year, having done, you know, several hundred audio journals, 
uh, over the years. I was like, okay, well, what can I do that's different this year? Well, what if I use the challenge to check in every day with a piece of an audiobook on how I think about leading comics workshops that hopefully I can package up as an audiobook slash ebook the following year. Well, didn't quite make the deadline of doing it the following year, but I'm pretty, I'm getting closer to having this thing as a shippable thing. So, and I said from the outset, like I said, I'm going to do this this year as a draft. I'm going to leave it out in the world, but then next year I'm going to take this down because um, I want to turn it into a product. Um, so yeah, I, 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 what I did is like, I think the two weeks before Art Sound Off, I wrote out an outline of a book I chunked it into sections and then I took those sections and I chunked them into what would be, how could I break this into 31 parts and then, or 30 parts. And I did it, uh, what was it? Like 15 minutes at a whack. Um, yeah, it one, varied, but it was, yeah, it did vary around there. But then, yeah, it wound up being, I think the final track was about four hours of audio that I did at 15 minutes a day. Um, so yeah, it, it made, neat. it made, I mean, that's like your own sort of NaNoWriMo kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. Um, and, and it made it a lot easier to do a lot of the editing of the ums and ahs and like the moments when I lost my train of thought, because I did do that on the fly because it was 15 minutes worth of audio, which meant it was maybe 20 minutes worth of editing, like scrubbing through and looking for the parts of the waveform where like it, the, everything dropped dead. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was more polished than what I typically delivered for my audio journals because I actually edited them. But um but I'm glad I did it because, yeah, now I have like this enormous resource that I can turn into something um, later on in the year. But that's not something I would recommend everybody do necessarily, um, you know, because the, the main idea what, that that was built out of the fact that, like I said, I had several hundred audio journals where I practiced thinking aloud about an idea. Right. Mm. I think both of us have answered the many prompts around our art sound off multiple times. Mm -hmm. And so this is another thing where it's like, you're, you're getting ready to, you know, come back and practice. If you, if you have some kind of workout routine or some sort of personal development thing, you, what you do it for that development changes because you build new, you, you've experienced things, you've built new capacity and it's time to keep moving. Right. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, for us, we, you know, we, we're testing this product too. And, you know, we're, we represent the case of someone who's done it like a bunch of times and how do you continue to get use out of it? Right. So yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. Um, so, um, I thought another interesting thing that I thought emerged worth pointing out is this, um, in a way art sound off part, partially via luck, right? Because if you, it's a fair amount of work. If, if, you're trying to listen to what everyone's posting every day, right? And so doing a little bit of, you know, um, nibbling and, and exploring here and there is more what I recommend because, you know, that can be a lot, but it depends on your situation. Maybe it's perfect uh, work, you know, um, office accompaniment to what you do. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, then it's like great free radio. But in any case, you get, you're going to hear some things that you might want to react to. And that kind of happened last year. And so there was a little bit of, um, it's, it's a little bits of it have happened every year, but, but there was um, this whole topic of almost like cultural awareness and blind spots and stuff that came up. And a few of us were talking about it both individually. And then we actually got together too. So mm -hmm. um, I think that creates a... A more obvious case that in a way art sound off is an anthology of just people putting putting out work at the same time it's not curated <laughs> it's just but it's sort of an open source anthology maybe it's it's um you know just that's, a, I, that's a lovely expression i love that open source anthology and when people choose to do things i'm it, because part of the 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 benefit of an anthology is um cross awareness of of the our different audiences and so more people learn about our different work because we're all doing this thing but we're different you know people doing this thing at the same time and then it can draw attention to it so i think that's one of the solid benefits of getting together in an anthology right um but haven't really thought about curating it or what have you the, the it's just this one's an open source one Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, 
that that was fun to listen to the interactions that came out of it and the responses that people had to one another. Um, and, and I think of uh, Leonard Angelo in particular was doing a lot of reacting to things that other people were saying. And then um, and he was also a good model to look at for somebody who didn't just react to what was happening in Art Sound Off. He was reacting to things that were just happening in art discussions everywhere. So like instead of using a prompt necessarily, he was like, well, let me let the, the general discussion in art that's happening right now give me a prompt. What do I think about this? Um, yeah. And yeah, those, those were really fascinating journals that, that he posted. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I caught lots of them. Didn't, didn't catch all of them, but uh, uh, then, then there's reactions on Twitter. There's this, this one, I don't know if we'll put in the show notes, but uh, Jesse, Jesse Kaufman really hung a, you know, he really put a sign out and pointed that, Hey, there's something going on here with these crossovers uh, people talking about, about the same thing in different different places on um, well, lean it's art extra lean art uh, the the um, polytechnicast and I thought um, we didn't we let's see we had a couple of didn't I visit your podcast too last yeah week? that's right this was a couple years before. ago yeah it was 2017 ago. yeah mm -hmm. you're right um, oh fascinating I, I I will pull up the tweet because that is. That is worth capturing before we go to our break. Uh, leave it to Jesse. Oh my goodness. So let me pull it up on screen and there it is. So an art sound off crossover event this year, checklist time, Lean to Art Cast 210, Extra Lean 114, Polytechnicast Art Sound Off 2017, Day 2, Blind Spot, and Thunder Punch Daily 251, Blind Spots Part 2. Is there really over 200 episodes of Thunder Punch Daily? Good Lord. Okay. So... Yeah, and I think this happened in other places too. I just thought the Jesse's uh, tweet is a very handy way to to pull the, you know, to to highlight this that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. There's there's the reaction back and forth is is neat, and just how, wherever it goes, this is a, you know, it's it's a month long um, experiment. So it's possible to, to purposefully react or to purposefully say, I'm not going to react to share it publicly or to not. That's any way you do it. it it's still practice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's worth underlining. This is about practice. This is about practicing something and practicing, not in the sense of like, I'm going to baseball practice so I can become a professional, but it's just like staying in practice, you know, something that, uh, you do it because you do it kind of practice. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Um, as, as somebody who fell in love with running, like, it's like, why do you run? Like, well, I'm not really out to like win the medals. I'm doing it because I like the act of doing it. You know, there is no, there's no agenda. <laughs> and, and, and like, it's, it's weird. It's weird because I, I would describe us both as fairly driven people. Um, We're fairly disciplined. We do what we do part because we love it, but also because we want some kind of desired outcome. Um, and it's nice to have a few things in my life that where it's like, I just do it. It's Apple Jacks. We eat what we like, that kind of thing. All right. Do you want to take a break? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. On so many levels. Yes. <laughs> All right. In about a minute and a half, we're going to talk about some other aspects of this and, and what we're going to do with our art sound offs this year as, as a way to model a way to like, uh, this idea of like hacking the challenge and why do we do it? Um, before we do that, we got to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people are the folks who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art. What is it? Well, if you haven't heard of it yet, it's crowdfunding, but on a monthly basis. It's a way for you to give a monthly upvote to the show. If you say, I believe in Rob and Jersey, I believe in what they do. How can I help make the show more sustainable? Well, an easy way you can do it that doesn't cost very much. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month is uh, you can sign up at Patreon.com slash lean into art and i want to thank five people who've been doing exactly that ashley knapp thank you ashley for believing in us what we do you can find ashley on twitter at control alt lee and steven stone bush thank you steven it means a lot to us uh, don't have your twitter handle but we, we do appreciate you being a part of the leaner community and Mike White, thank you, Mike, for supporting us and believing in us and what we do. Uh, recently joined us on the uh, uh, Lean Into Art Discord. Good to see you there, Mike. And Tim F., thank you, Tim. 
And finally, Jodel's Pox, you can find on Twitter at jbombartist. And you can join them at patreon.com slash leanintoart, where you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts happen monthly. They become an open mic thread. We can talk about whatever, wherever, whatever you want in a safe place where only fellow leaners hang out. Patreon.com slash leanintoart. Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot to us. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. All right, I need some music, Rob. I need to find something that'll make us feel... Oh. Oh, that feels kind of heavy and leaded. But it also feels ponderous and thoughtful. <laughs> like we're going to unlock a mystery. Da, 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 da. Okay. So. <laughs> what's the big surprise? What are we planning to do with Art Sound Off this year? Oh, what gosh. Are you, what big are you surprise? Do? Um, whew, let's see. Somehow, uh, through like the magic of Star Trek technology, I hope to put a microphone under everyone's chair and they'll just pull it out and be like, I can podcast now. Like, I don't know. No, I'm not <laughs> planning on doing that. Um, it'd be a neat thing. I mean, if you have, if you have the ability to, to transport and replicate matter, why wouldn't you like, why wouldn't everyone be gifting weird stuff all the time? <laughs> That's true. That is really true. Oh, man. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Another stuffed raccoon? What? <laughs> um, I used to do this thing to my mother-in-law where I would always keep some Tootsie Rolls in my pocket. And I would just like go up to her and I'd be like, hey, Mary Lou. And she, I'd like like make her look down at my hand and hand her a Tootsie Roll. And like it was just this dumb thing I did at like one family gathering that uh, like it was... N- it was just me like trying to pass the time. I'm like, I'm going to bother my mother-in-law with Tootsie Rolls. Keep giving her Tootsie Rolls. And so now it's like, it's like this ongoing thing where it's like, I'll be like, hey, Mary Lou. She's like, no, I'm not going to look down there. You're not going to have me a Tootsie Roll. No. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing. It, it has exactly zero meaning. No meaning whatsoever. It's just It was something I did when I was bored at a family event and it's become a running gag. Okay, so that's that's what we would do with matter transportation. We wouldn't use it to better mankind. We'd use it to hassle one another with dumb gifts. Um. <laughs> well, you know, it's not mutually exclusive. Is all I'm saying. You can solve important things too. Um, yeah. So, okay. So now the the sixth time, uh, tools constraints. So one thing I encountered recently because of a podcast I do with uh, Kate Shield Stenzinger, um, the Art and Science Punks podcast, is Kate mentioned this creative challenge that sounded. Um, just really friendly and uh, like extra gentle um, where I thought, why? I, it made me want to t- like take a fresh look at Art Sound Off and, and wonder what about it is already like that and, and how could we embrace that more? Uh, because there's, there's aspects of this, um, the, uh, that's it's it's a community that does sewing and i'm trying to remember the the name of the challenge and i should have put it in the show notes here but it's like um oh ig bag fest instagram so i think it's like you know every community gets their jargon right so instagram bag fest like people who sew bags right okay well and right making a party of it and then the prompts are a lot more about sort of, well, introduce yourself and then talk about your tools and stuff and whatever. And that I think emphasizing a little bit more of that, getting the uh, like the socializing and community recognition stuff um, sounds useful to me. It sounds also gentle and fun, but maybe that's, uh, what do you think when you hear that Jersey? Well, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to find the, the website, the Instagram account for it. um, And it's, it, yeah, it's 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 Bagfest. Uh, tw- it's on July twenty seventh, twenty nineteen. Is that when they held it this year? No, I think it's going on now. Oh, all right. Well, Bagfest hashtag on Twitter. Bagfest has Instagram posts. Um, um, here we go. I think I found a Instagram post. Here we go. And then I'll put this in our Twitch chat. Boop. Okay. Cool. Oh, I'm not logged in, and it says no thanks to my, to my <laughs> thing. So that's fun. I'm going to put it in our secret chat thinger, 
and you put in the zoom zoom chat yeah, exactly okay so i will open it up in a browser now and i will <laughs> as i document or as i narrate what i'm doing for the people who are listening Say in the audio what i'm doing <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. I'm pulling up the. Um, there we go. Got it on the screen. Now describe what, what it is. Okay. So to me, I, I I saw these prompts, especially as Kate described them on the show, as being pretty um, low hurdle and friendly and com more community based. Like instead of only just about your, you know, unpacking your process, a little bit would be about discovering one another, right? Mm. So. That's that seems to be part of the point of this, and I thought, well, if we embraced a little bit more of that, maybe, maybe that helps emphasize aspects of, uh, well, marketing yourself and what you do, and and that and you know other practices that we can bring in, but also in a low hurdle hurdle context, right? To to not make it like extra challenging, um, because mm. there's plenty of ways to be hard on yourself and make things harder and, and more challenging, and all you got to do is say. I'm going to edit my show. <laughs> All you got to do is, is you know, um, um, try to do an essay every time. I don't know. I'm not trying to pick on you, Jersey, with these, but <laughs> yeah, do for two. Sorry. Well, yeah, I know. Well, okay. So yeah, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that, right. That's what we're learning here. Uh, um, so it's interesting though, where, where, so the first one, they, they have introductions and then look at your, your sewing machine and your space and, um, talk about when you worked outside your comfort zone and, and uh, uh, your aspirations through a bucket list project. And uh, like, what have you made for others or for via swaps or gifts, right? And things like that. And so some of these things, I'm, I'm, I don't know if other folks have participated in a mini comics uh, swap, but I remember back in the oh, story, day, story yeah. days, the mini comics dump truck. And I'm like, mini oh, comics yeah. dump truck. That was such a fun project. That was such yeah. a fun thing to do. Um. Yeah, because like what it was was is that everybody made a mini comic over a certain period of time, and then you, the buy-in was is that uh, you had to send a copy of your mini comic to everybody in who was participating, and every, and therefore everybody who was participating had to send one to you. So like there was a cost incurred in that, like oh, and I got to send out twenty copies of my mini comic to a bunch of people, but then I also got twenty new mini comics in the mail, and that was fun. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So. It reminded me of of some of those things, and I don't. What do you think now? I, I'm like you. You heard my context, and I've already biased the heck out of you with that. But like, what's your reaction to to this line of um, potential of evolution? So, I, I okay. Inspired by low hurdle, more social types of posts. Learn about a sewing creative challenge from Kate, and so I'm I'm just like, how how would this up? What would an art sound off challenge look like? under that like you're saying like inst instead of like question posts do one word posts or how, how are you saying this you would map this well, on every one of these on right so there's a lot of facilitation too along the way that's another mm -hmm. thing too where ig bag fest there's a post that does that explains more about introductions right uh, uh every single day there's kind of like this pace of explaining more about this prompt and also, I think it's partially, it's not just that, that it's, it's so concise and, you know, postable on Instagram. It's just the, um, the, the content isn't requiring as much immediately start um, practicing what might be the harder stuff. And so maybe I'm, I'm just, you know, um, I'm taking some guesses at this based on just, just past years. And, but my experience is pretty dis distorted too. I think um, I recently noticed, I think I've done over 650 podcasts. So, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, so, you know, pretty comfortable with it. Uh, but, mm -hmm. so, but I can try to imagine those, those early days, what have you, mm -hmm. and think about like, what's, what's a friction point for me now? What have, so again, and also things that have positive, side effects in like practicing them helps aspects of you know doing your your work and being holistic about it it's not just exploring it not just sharing it and getting it done but like maybe how you share it as far as um 
maybe practicing pitching your work or like if you had to, to do like a tweet length pitch about your what you're maybe I, maybe I'm making it harder I don't know uh, but like uh, that's that's an example of of describing the work but the social aspect is another thing too where more mm -hmm. like encouraging the possibility of more reacting to one another's stuff mm -hmm. and maybe making it easier to to do along the way mm. Okay. So like when I think about, and this is actually something I was thinking about for my challenge is like, could I introduce a visual uh, aspect to it in that? Can I make this thing somehow Instagrammable in that I say, uh, I'm talking about the subject. Here's an image of the subject to hear me talk about the subject, click the link kind of thing. Mm. Um, uh, is there like is it something where I could do a drawing of the subject at every day as well, which is ent introducing a whole nother friction point because it's like, do I have the extra five minutes to do a drawing, or would I do like a sixty second drawing of the thing in order to keep it more manageable, right? And then I'm also sort of showing my uh, my my sloppy drawing publicly. Um, but what I'm getting from this IG bag fest post as I look at it is that the, the prompts are one word and it, it's reminding me a little bit more of like the Inktober challenge where it's one word and it's open to interpretation. So when you say, I suppose I, I'm bringing my own, my own assumption that it's, you can make it small, a small hurdle post because maybe, but, but honestly, you know, this, each one of these could be big, I guess. No, I, I no, I, I was actually saying like, yeah, this is like asking you. So when you say best tip, best tip is day thirteen. Well, is it your best tip or is it the best tip you ever heard? Right. True. Uh, yep. yep. So like, it's it's ambiguous in the sense that it's it's open for you to play it your way rather than because like our our prompts. I can go to artsoundoff.com right now, um, and I'll go. I'll pull it up on the screen too. So like, what are our prompts? Um, we've got. Scroll down. Daily journal prompts. You know, what do you hope for? What do you fear? Write down three words that come to mind as you consider your day. Pick uh, one to talk about. Right. Um, and that, that's that's intended to be uh, leading, somewhat open to interpretation. But it does. It, it is an interrogative rather than a declarative. Right. Um, where if we say workspace, talk about workspace. What do you mean? What my workspace? Your workspace, what I hope for in a workspace, what have been some workspaces I've had? I don't know. Do you know? You tell me, you know? Uh, hmm. So yeah, that's what I, I that's what I'm reacting to. One of these to. would be like, seriously, like when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Maybe easy to unpack, maybe not. Right. Yeah. So maybe maybe make maybe keep these as legacy prompts but like do a new prompt list this year that's based on like the sort of like the one word approach um and something like what i'm also getting from this as i what i react to when i look at ig bag fest is that there's a visual element to theirs is there a way to bring a visual element to art sound off because we are visual storytellers so you do workspace as a prompt, share a picture of your workspace and talk about it for a few minutes. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Well, not even say that, just say workspace, but then invite some kind of visual component. We love to set up the inquiry. And yeah, I'm we do. fan of it. And I'm also trying to say like, well, what could be another approach, right? And yeah. and it's, you know, it's I'm not saying uh, this has all the answers, but, you know, we've seen lots of, um, you know, very concise prompt lists before so um some aspect i think i, I like that that's a good point i wasn't even considering the conciseness of it and and that's that may be that may have lots of si a positive side effects to just try that because of the openness that's interesting yeah um but then you also mentioned um slow down oh, which yes. was a microcast that you were uh very excited about earlier this year, and I wound up listening to them all. Um, and that's how I know how to say it. So <laughs> I wonder if you could talk about this. Uh, so, yeah, uh, someone I follow on Twitter, a uh, writer, uh, Jacques, Jacques Nim, uh, he um, made a microcast series, but he did it as like Netflix style, where he, he made eight of them. Uh, and then well, he also 
did a really good job as far as um, he talked about it before he put it out in the world. He's mm. like, I'm making this show and this is what I'm thinking of doing and et cetera. And then, so he shared about it oh, for a while, which made me really curious and, and be like, okay, so when you're going to post it, because I want, I want to subscribe to it already there. So he did a nice job selling it. Um, then sh- shared all eight episodes at once. Boom. And we, we talked about it, I think on a, um, um, what a reading, watching, playing episode. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so the gist of it is, um, uh, Jock is, he's advocating for, um, being essentially less stressed and rushed about our creative endeavors and also trying to be more open to casual creative endeavors. So, you know, he, he has some various prompts where my problem. So I, I'm, I actually want to reply to his prompts. I don't know if I highlighted this the last time we mentioned it, but I listened to them all back to back. Wow. And so, so I went, Oh, I got to reply to this, but then I kept listening to the next one. Oh, I got to reply to this from the, <laughs> and so it had the side effect of now, now what was like a little bit of work to me became enough work when I'm like, hmm, now I got a stuff, a lot of replies to do. I should keep doing my other work. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Interesting side effect of that, but um, I, I just thought it was a really cool project where um, it's it's a neat neat approach to to doing a journal, having having a bit of a theme about it, and um, like an overall thesis, right? But then exploring different aspects of it. So, yeah, yeah, and I I listened to them all too, and he seemed to, like this was uh, a microcast series where he had a point of view and in a, in a, sort of in a, a philosophy to share. Right. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I mean, you can read it right in the description of the of the podcast and it's on anch- it's anchor dot FM slash slow down with three O's. And uh, it's a micro podcast for creatives, entrepreneurs and folks who make stuff. We'll chat about not stressing ourselves out and learning to enjoy our journeys. Novel. Absolutely novel. Uh, mm-hmm. So. So, yeah. So that represents you, like what a I mean, so here you go. I think that's another recipe. Right. So drop some at once and with a, with a thesis or a a theme. That's an interesting idea. Okay. So so can we segue to uh, my not quite formulated plan for this year? Cause you gave me some advice on that. It it ties into what you, you gave me some advice on the topic. I put out an Instagram call uh, and I will pull it up right now uh, where I was like, I'm thinking of, doing oh gosh i instagram stories you're so funny um i was thinking of doing a series of audio essays on 31 cartoon characters and i put out a call on instagram saying like but which one should i do and you suggested uh why don't you do some themed series like oh here's talk about sidekicks talk about villains so like chunk it out into like different uh groups of material and that would be a way to deliver that with like the slow down models. Like, okay, this week, here we go. Friday, here's a dump of, whoa, sorry. I had my Instagram story still playing in the background <laughs> and it started cheering for me. Hooray. <laughs> and now uh, for the new section of the show, yay, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for me. That's the new Woo-hoo. part. Uh, but, um, but yeah, anyway, where was I going with that? Oh, yes. Uh, if I did do it in the themes like that, it would it would apply itself very well to, well, let's not do it every day. Let's do it once a week, but we get like seven microcasts on seven characters. Here's the seven characters I've got. Um, yeah, that would, that would be a, a way to do it. And it, it, it would, if you have a particularly, f- uh, I don't want to say chaotic. I want to say um, a more unpredictable and fluid schedule <laughs> where you're not sure where I'm going to put this new thing I'm doing every day. Well, maybe, maybe do instead of like 15 minutes a day, you do an hour a week and you figure out where that hour could go. And then boom, you've got your four or five chunks to deliver, um, deliver it all at once. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's an interesting, that's an interesting model. So maybe not to add a lot of uh, difficult choices because also 
that can be a problem. You can get choice paralysis, the whole classic idea of, you know, there can be too many flavor, too many options for jelly at the grocery store, right? Um, you want something to spread on your toast. And if you've got 50 options, you might choose none. Right. So, um, but I do like the idea of offering that option to, to just, you know, to celebrate it where I, I just think it's, it's, it's clever, like doing a themed drop of however many you want. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably three would be, a, otherwise it's kind of like, well, you just, just made, <laughs> I don't know, like I guess yeah. two or more, two or more technically. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, otherwise you're asking, well, I'm, I don't know. I, it, it, I guess it, I don't want to be prescriptive about that. And I don't think you do either. Um, I'm just thinking aloud about like what I'm asking people to commit to. If I say like, here's an hour of audio, but I do that every week with the lean into our cast. Right. So, um, but I'll tell you to, to, to sidestep that, uh, what, what my goal with this idea of like thinking aloud about like, uh, picking a cartoon character that I have, have spent a lot of time thinking about over the years and just doing a 10 minute audio essay on each one, uh, is a way to sort of, um, not necessarily to build content. Although I do think that like, for instance, if I say like, okay, here's 10 minutes of me ruminating about sky warp from transformers, why sky warp? You know, I remember sky warp. I, I have, I have a lot of feelings for that character. I want to hear what Jersey has to say about it. That kind of thing. It's, it has like an emotional component that we all have fond memories for one character or another. Um, but also I'm preparing to actually start a new podcast in the coming months. Um, and anybody who remembers the Saturday supercast, do you remember that Rob? I do. I do. Uh, yeah. It was, it was a it was a show where I talked with other cartoonists about cartoons that influenced us as creators. Well, I'm doing something similar, and it's going to be with a non uh, creator. It's somebody who doesn't make comics, but it's us talking about a, uh, a a specific cartoon series that we both really really have a lot of thoughts on, and we're going to do like an episode by episode show, one of those like uh, watch and talk about shows, um, which I've 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 never. I've never been like super into them, listening to them. I and I've never thought that anybody would want to hear me talk about it, but it's something we do anyway. So we're like, all right, let's just capture it and see what happens with it. But in order to get myself warmed up to it, to like get myself thinking in that direction, and because I haven't done a, pro a project like that in a long time, I thought, okay, well, I can use Art Sound Off as a way to sort of like get those juices flowing and get into a practice of thinking this way about this particular subject. How do I think about these characters, right? So that's that's my the, the what I hope to get out of the challenge is to get myself thinking in a certain direction. And then also at the end of it, if it proves to be interesting to people, me thinking about these things a lot, I say now, hey, go check out this website at the end because going back to Jacques and slow down, it's like I've, I've talked about this thing a lot. Now I've got a place to send you to go start checking it out. So, oh, that's really clever. That sounds like a real what a what a fun project idea, and. Uh, how funny too, because you, you pointed out like a, yet a different type of practice, which is proto prototyping. In yeah. Way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess it is. It's, uh, uh, it's, but I don't plan on doing what I did last year where I'm, I'm not going to edit them. I'm not going to write out a whole bunch of notes. I'm just going to come up with 31 character name prompts and then I'm going to think aloud about them for a whole, you know the whole part the, the, the terms of the, of the, of the art sound off project. That's great. I, I don't have it nailed down as far as what I want to try. I knew I wanted to update prompts. I like the idea of playing along. I like the idea of continuing. I've got more UX stuff to unpack. <laughs> I, and I, it's, well, I guess I've practiced podcasting to the point where it's one of the um, easiest ways for me to explore a topic and get my thoughts out where writing an essay, hmm, I can do that too. It's just not as, um, yeah, it's just not as quick and easy for me. So I don't know. I, I'd like to cover more territory with that topic for sure. So I'm trying to think if there's, if there's any, any other, obvious things. And I, and I do like the idea of experimenting with, with other prompts. 
Hmm. But um, how neat too, where I like, in a way you're, you're, you're modeling Jersey with that approach. Just talk about something you love. Yeah. And uh, that's a, I once did, I actually did a presentation at the Ann Arbor District Library years ago about, and it was like like three ways that podcasting has enhanced my career. And it was just like sort of food for thought about like how presenting myself in an audio format on a regular basis created new opportunities and inroads for me as a creative person. And the I concluded the whole talk with this thought about like, okay, well, how do I even think about starting this kind of thing? And I was like, all you have to do this is going to sound like it's a self-help kind of guy. All you got to do is a simple thing, but like a, 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 a simple way of thinking about it, let me put it that way, is what are you insufferable about at parties? What what subject do people roll their eyes about when they're like, oh, here he goes again. <laughs> He's on this one. And I'm not, I mean, it could be any time. It could be like even your political views if, if you want it to be. But it, what I'm saying is like the thing that you were present for one of these times where somebody made the mistake of mentioning an 80s cartoon that I had a lot of fondness for. And they just said, like, does anybody remember this thing called Galaxy Rangers? I was like, oh, Galaxy Rangers, let me talk about it. And then I just started going. And it's just like, blah, I was like barfing out all of this affection, enthusiasm, and knowledge about this series, right? Um, and it's one of those things where it's like the people who've been around me enough, they're like, oh, you did it. You opened the tap. Why'd you do that? Um, but uh, yeah, what, what everybody has something like that, right? Something that, like, drives them, like, psychologically mad uh, with love for a thing so just pick that thing and i'm sure you can find a thousand layers as to why it moves you so um if you spend enough time thinking aloud about it right i mean yeah and and you don't run out that's the thing everyone's uh you know people people ask oh, oh you know oh you, you you know, oh, you do you podcast? Oh, yeah. How, how long is you, how long have you been doing that? Et cetera. Oh, did, haven't you run out of things to say? Yeah. And that's the thing is is the more you become conversant in a topic, the more you find other inroads and relationships in the topic and outside the topic. And yeah. this, yeah, this is um. So I like to talk a lot about um how I engage with uh the creative process. Yeah. So, yeah, Lena Tart's a pretty good <laughs> outlet for this. <laughs> yeah, the 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 new show that I'm going to start with this friend of mine, we have literally been talking on the phone for an hour a week every week for 25 years. We we just hit our 25 year mark, right? 25 years we've been talking on the phone and mostly about that particular show. <laughs> I don't know how many hours that adds up to, but like, it's like, okay, yeah, I think we're, I think we're practiced in this. We could probably come at this thing from a variety of different ways. And like, I, when we were talking about some episodes of the show, I'm like, he was saying like, we're not going to talk very long about this one. I'm like, I don't know. You know, I bet we could find two hours in there if we really wanted to. So roughly 1300 hours. <laughs> okay. So it's not quite Malcolm Gladwell level yet, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot though that's a lot of practice so so <laughs> i like how you did that calculation on the fly all right um let's talk about do we want to save the 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 new tools that we want to play with for the final thought sold i think that's a great <laughs> idea because i i think having yeah. different constraints and the tools you choose new tool new tools come into existence and yeah, I think, yeah, we have some thoughts to share about that. Um, and it can change the context of what you might create with this kind of creative challenge. That sounds good. Okay. So in about a minute or two, we're going to close out with some thoughts about like tools we're going to use this year and tools that are available to use to participate in this art sound off thing. But before we do that, we got to thank some more people who make this show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make the show possible and we make lots of stuff that informs all of these thoughts that we bring to the show every week. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out is Boulder Fleet Adventures for Hire. It's a new book that just came out this year called Mining for Trouble, chronicling on uh, 89, 90, 91 page story that I did a couple years ago on the web, but now finally collected it in print. And it's a talking animal adventure story. It's an all ages book um, and it explores 
um, the idea of like what 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 do you do with power when you have it? Um, there's a line in the book where Boulder says to the bad guy, "You talk about power and responsibility like they're two different things," and uh, to him they're the same thing. And it's uh, my the meta story that I try to tell in there is like I like to explore really rip roaring high intensity action and adventure, but through the lens of not celebrating violence. So celebrating action, not celebrating violence. Um, so it's it's also, I think it's something that is appropriate for young people as well. And it's, uh, you can find it at books.jdros.com. You can get it in print and you can get a digital version for your iPad if you want it. So Rob, you, last week you did some coaching with me. You coached mm -hmm. me through some very difficult uh problems I was having with a project and got me excited about it again. And this is a service that you offer to the public. Yeah. I, I, the funny thing about that process is, is that, well, any, anyone can listen to that sample of, of coaching. So, um, and, and this is a service that I offer now and I've, I've started a business. You can see it at uh, shieldstenzinger.com. Really easy way to get there is just go to, you're like, what's that? URL, it's, it's got two S's in the middle. Don't worry about it. Just go to robcoach.me. Easy to remember, robcoach.me. And what coaching is all about is you're hiring someone to help you navigate um, how you're trying to solve a problem. And it can be a problem in your creative process, professional opportunities, uh, collaboration. So maybe maybe it's not even a solo problem. You're, you're working with a team and you want to work this out together. I can help with that. And that's um, the, the, the thing about it is it's not me coming in and prescribing. It's me really skillfully listening and uh, asking questions at useful times to help you progress through to find that thing that gets you the traction to keep moving to where you want to go. And so it's like clarifying the problems that you're trying to solve and picking which one and how do you move forward? All that stuff, that's what we work out with coaching. and. Um, you know, if you're curious, you haven't experienced that yet, or maybe you're, you know, you, you saw the last week's show and you want to try it out. That's awesome. So just go to robcoach.me and click on the schedule a coaching session button. Super easy. Um, you can, you can buy a bunch, you can buy a package of, of coaching sessions and that's, that's easy too, but you don't have to spend any money to start. You can do a discovery session, which is free, which is uh, easy to get. You just, you just book the time with me right there. And it's on your calendar. It's on my calendar. It's just easy peasy. So robcoach.me, schedule a coaching session, discover what it's about, see if I'm the right coach for you. Awesome. And then if uh, another thing that we do that uh, we hope you will engage with is the Lean Into Art Discord. So we have a Discord server now, and uh, it is a place for leaners to hang out and share uh, comments on the show, thoughts about the show, topic suggestions for future shows. And also we have a creative challenge uh, cha uh, channel now where you can post things that you're, uh, you know, like you could post your art sound offs there, actually. That'd be a really great place where the, the most engaged people who interact with the show all hang out. And there are three public channels for just anybody to join. Um, and then there's three channels for uh, people who support us on Patreon, there's Castle Level Up, where you can post the different things that you're struggling with that you're working on. I've shared some things, and I'm like, I'm not sure about this, and to get feedback from people. There's Gentle Town, where it's okay to ask for a high five. Hey, look at a thing I made. I'm really happy with it. And then you get some support on that. And then there's just a social channel, where it's like, hey, look, there's this really great food truck in town, and I love it. Um, and we will put a link to the invite link in the show notes. Um, but yes, the Lean Tart Discord, we hope you will join us there. So... Okay. Um, final thoughts. Uh, so you introduced me to this really cool transcription service. So another thing I was thinking about is with this series of essays about a character is they could be pretty good blog posts for someplace uh, in my, you know, one of my various websites um, or even like a medium post or something. Someplace just to like share those thoughts in a way that is, I, I don't expect everybody to sit down and listen to my microcast um, if they're you know reading it in a library or a public place. So maybe I can also turn these into blog posts as well. So I, I wonder if you could talk about like how, how you're thinking about using transcription in your work. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have, I've been someone who uses uh, speech to text for many years. And 
uh, I mean, even since like the late nineties and, and I, I was, uh, <laughs> I would, I would always encounter friction with it, right? Because I was the person who had Dragon Naturally Speaking on my computer and I would be in a land of cubicles and start talking to my computer and people are like, what? You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Speak up. And I'm like, oh, I'm talking to my computer. What? You're talking to your computer? I'm like, not anymore. Um, well, back then it probably was a little bit more of an unusual thing, right? <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> You're but, like Scotty in Star Trek Four. <laughs> sure. <laughs> ah, and so I've it's been this t- tempting, tantalizing thing, and I've you know like the tools like Dragon Naturally Speaking. I don't know what it's like nowadays. I haven't used it for for a few years because most of like what it could do is now integrated into the into Mac OS, and it's it's easy to sort of activate this um this you know speech to speech to text mode, and it's pretty good when you especially when you have the the dictation habit where you're like um starting a new document about lean into art new paragraph i was thinking about this topic of when it gets difficult to go to the next stage of a drawing period new 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 paragraph you know and so you're doing this all these um you're adding dictation things that are recognized and add punctuation and structure to a document it's fine and it's well, I like it actually, but then I still need to be in a certain situation to use it. Anyway, yeah. um, I'm more often in a situation where I record audio files like draft polytechnicasts or thoughts about what I'm trying to accomplish, you know, topics for lean into art, whatever. Like if I'm in a commute and I'm just talking to my phone, which is recording, right? I can just literally voice activate that, whatever. And so I'll have these recordings and I think, well, what do I do with these recordings now? I have to f- listen to them again and whatever to get the information out. So I'm always on the hunt for like some improved transcription service. And I have tried services, you know, when I've been on a, working on a project with a budget, it's fine. It's, it's easy to, to, to justify funding. Um, so I've used things like rev.com. Um, it's pretty good. Fairly okay price. But not as cheap, but but cost just enough where it's still it's not like I'm going to transcribe anything I feel like, right? It's always mm. I'm, I'm going to be picky, really, really picky about what I would want to put through that. Um, and so along comes Otter.ai. Lots of folks have talked about this and blogged and what have you. Um, both celebrating it, mostly celebrating it, and then some concerns, right? Because, you know. Um, what's the shadowy thing behind this service? It's too good to be true and what have you. Uh, and it's, it's that good where I am a little suspicious of it. <laughs> um, but you know, I've any thread I've pulled on, I'm not, I didn't find something I worried about. Um, okay. So, so far I'm, I'm like, I'm just accepting that it's too good to be true. And I did pay for the, I pay for it too. So it's a real product. They are not a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. They should be. Because <laughs> uh, what I'm happily, about to say. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so otter.ai, it's pretty darn good. And it's better than anything else. Because I, I actually did jump through the flaming hoops to send my um, recorded tech, my recorded speech, like I would use this program called Just Press Record and get my get stuff, thoughts recorded, and then feed it into um, the Apple Mac OS transcription, right? So you have to, to make an audio device that takes uh, audio text as input and whatever. So I ended up using, um, oh, what's that? It, you can kind of do this with Soundflower or um, there's a new one by Rogue Amoeba, who they're not a sponsor either, but um, the, uh, what's that thing called? It's called like, I think I mentioned it loop back mm. anyway. So you, so all of a sudden I I've jumped through those hoops to essentially feed that this stuff into my local speech to text, whatever. And it's rough, not that great. Otter.ai is crazy pants. Pretty good. Um, I, I have my account open and I have a, a file that I transcribed. Do you want to demo it right here on the show? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So I'm going to pull it up on the screen. And so I just put in uh, an old Fabulous Secrets episode. 
And so we got, it's got summary keywords. That's pretty cool. And then as I, I can hit play and it was, whoa, let's skip ahead. Working on the thing you're working on, you have a job. It's highlighting the words. You get a client or you get a gig. You also have to be, while you're working on that gig, simultaneously working towards finding the next gig. You always- so it's it's literally highlighting the words it's transcribed as it plays the audio. So you can see what it's getting exactly right, what it may be missed on. Um, and, and it gives it, it even chunks it out into what it perceives to be paragraphs. Um, like, let me pull it back up. Because um, like, it's got a big chunk of text there, but then as I scroll down, it's like, okay, well, I detected that it, that there was a break or another speaker started talking, and it chunks it out that way. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah, um, sorry, J- Just Press Record does have a um, transcription built in, too, but okay. it's the same as what I described before. It, it looks about as accurate as trying to get um, macOS speech-to-text to transcribe stuff, whereas otter.ai... Um, that's next level. This is like what I, I imagine most tools want to do. Wow. And, uh, and so now, now think about that. So now you create these, all these essays and they're audio at first, but they don't have to stay that way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I remember it, going back to the art and story days, we got a, a couple of comments from people saying like, we, can you please post transcriptions of your episodes so we could just read them? And, and I was like, that was in like 2008. And I'm like, <laughs> not without a lot of money, I can't do that, you know? Uh, back then, that was an expensive proposition. But this is banana. So like, what's the, f- the free account? What does it give you? Um, 600 minutes. Good Lord. So 10 hours. A month. A month, yeah. So it renews, that renews every month. And for the paid Lord. account, you get 6,000 minutes. Wow. Yeah, this is this is pretty darn good, and it's it, I even love that it's like finding like summary keywords. Like, okay, here's the topics that you uh, uh, covered in this. You mentioned these 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 topics a lot. Um, that's really cool. So yeah, I mean, like I could be going back to my back catalog of uh, microcast essays. There's like if knowing now that there's over 200 episodes of Thunder Punch Daily, I could be mining those for like a lot of interesting blog posts. Uh, Indeed. Um, and then that has various effects. I'm not saying, you know, it's one-to-one. You make a, uh, you know, you, you, you unpack thoughts and you record that. And then now it's an instant blog post. Probably right. not, but it's probably, probably way not. further than starting from nothing. Well, as somebody who, so, so here we get to like my vulnerabilities as a creative person. I think I've talked about this in the last episode is that I feel uh, a sense of insecurity when it comes to writing prose. It's not something that I've defined myself as a creative person about. It's something that I punched out of in high school where it's like, Hey, I'm a cartoonist. I don't need to learn how, like compositional writing. So like I, I purposefully like didn't do, I didn't attend to those classes very well because I didn't see the instant connection. I should have, I really should have had the presence of mind to realize like, if I learn how to write this way, it probably will improve higher right that way but i was so i was so like i had my blinders on i'm like i make comic books that's all i do that's all i'll ever do you know uh you think i'm ferocious about it now man when i was 16 i was i was a monster when it came to that but um so i it's something where i feel like i don't have a ton of confidence when it comes to writing prose and something dan michigan once said to me he's like you need to learn to write the way you talk he's like when you talk there's an effervescence to the way you construct ideas and explain them he's like but you don't write like that. Um, so I'm thinking about like, this is going to be instructive for me as somebody who's nervous about writing prose. Well, let's take a big body of text based on the way I talk and how can I shape that up into something that would be more transmissible as a blog post? Yeah, I, I'm still in, in uh, it's not exactly the, the same feelings about writing, but then uh, it's just being really comfortable with the spoken word uh that alone it's just my my ability to produce and get through drafts and get ideas out versus being stuck and 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 slower um i've done various writing practice i've done the thing where you just sort of get words out and try to do like 500 700 words a day and that kind of thing and and um it's doable but then it's it's not it's still not as not as quick and easy so it's um Hopefully, maybe there's a way to like, like use one strength to help 
uh, build up another. So one one final final thought. I know we got a we got a book because we, this is a long one, um, yeah. unexpectedly long. But I want to grab that link you put in the notes from Troy Shadowing Tronics. Can we talk about that real quick? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So this is an interesting thing. And it was, I was okay. This is one an, an experiment I was considering. Like I might try to host this, right? Mm. So, but I'm not, you know going to be the only one and i would do only a small group but the idea that shadowing trying says it says is uh what would be neat if all the art sound off participants got together in a group podcast after uh the event and then yeah after the event to discuss taking part uh to yeah so anyone want to host that and so that's an interesting one potential topic to to use to get together but then you could do any topic as a group so I think uh, a group show is interesting. It'd be Discord fun. has audio functioning, right? Hmm. Oh, yeah. So we could host I a group kind of... audio discussion on Discord and then capture it for... That's intriguing. And that's another reason to join the Lean Into Art Discord, everybody. If you're planning on participating in Art Sound Off, not only can you post your Art Sound Offs there, where the, the most active and engaged uh, leaners hang out, but that's potentially where we could all have like sort of like a, a debriefing afterwards and discuss our experience. Hmm. Practice That's reflection with Rob, uh, Rob, Rob me facilitating the discussion. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I did not consider discord. That's pretty cool. Fun idea, Jersey. Yeah. Well, it's something to think about and we would love to hear, uh, everybody's input on this, uh, hmm. what you think would be the best way to do it. Um, entertaining all ideas all right i think we did another podcast rob and uh, all right your thank 700th you. yeah thank you for this this topic and this uh, this this framing um we record the show every thursday at noon eastern time 11 a.m central and we stream it live on twitch.tv slash lena twart and then collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash lena twart and lena twart.com until next time everybody i have been jersey drozd of lena twart.com and jersey drozd on instagram and i've been rob stenzinger of lena twart.com and i am also rob stenzinger on instagram okay bye show notes for this episode can be found at lean into art.com you can also follow us on Twitter at the user Lean Into Art, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.